Hello everybody. Uh, in my previous videos about how to weld the lithium-ion batteries and I use my CD welders to do that so I got uh, some messages from guys on the YouTube and they said that they need to know what is the construction or how I build my CD welder. So at the beginning I did that video and uh, it was a very long video it was about more than 30 minutes and when I tried to upload it I found that the YouTube says that this video is too long and they cannot upload it and and I don't know how to and in, and in fact it was about more than 3.6 gigabytes so it was very long and with the high resolution and uh, so I try to reduce the resolution and I will make it many parts so this video will be part number one how I build my CD welder so in this uh, five six minutes I'll talk about the schematics and uh, if I finish talking about the schematics in this part then we will in the part number two we will talk about how I build my CD welder this one so let us talk about the schematic first and see what is consist and then we will see the part on the side so first we need a power supply that supply us with 15.8 volt this is the the voltage that I am used to charge the capacitor because uh, these capacitor, capacitors they they work on maximum 16 volt so I don't want to exceed these limits so I make it 15.8 and in fact this voltage work perfectly so we need first a power supply to give us 15.8 volts so if you have a power supply that can give you 12 amp or more 15.8 volt that's good so we we can start from here but if you don't have the power supply then you need to make a power supply uh, what I did is I found that I have a MOT microwave transformer and I just removed the secondary winding, the thin wires and uh, all other things and I left the primary, the thicker wire and uh, then I wind 20 or 25 turns and then the the output of the of this transformer will be about 24 volt so I took this 24 volt to bridge rectifier you can uh, I'm using here a 50 volt 50 amp bridge rectifier maybe I'll, uh, I'll try to put some list of the parts I'm using and where you can find it so uh, let me just explain the parts here and then uh, I, I will try to put a list where you can find these parts so after the bridge rectifier we took this voltage 24 volt to DC to, TZ, to DC converter it's a step down converter and uh, here we, ne we need to have a higher power so we need to have 12 amp or more like 200 watt DC to DC power step uh, sorry step down converter what I did is that I just took out the, the potentiometer that is on the DC to DC converter and make some extension wires and took it out and put it in place where I can 
uh, easily adjust the volt the out output voltage from outside of the box that I'm that I put all these parts in. So we just make an extension wires, small wires for the potentiometer and put it where we think it's a good place for adjusting the, the output voltage. After that, from here we can took some two wires and see what is the output voltage here because here we put a voltmeter two wire voltmeter or three wire voltmeters I'm using here two wire voltmeters and uh, also I'll try to put some link for this voltmeter use two wire voltmeters to see the output vo volt, uh, voltage and here I put a switch so when this switch off the voltmeter will read the output voltmeter uh, the output voltage from the the DC to DC converter when I put the switch on it will read the voltage of the capacitor how much is they are charged so this switch should be 10 amp or more 24 volt or 20 volt whatever the higher the better after that we took the voltage to the capacitors here we and they are audio capacitor audio car capacitors and uh, I'm using here two capacitors on parallel one of them is uh, I think it's uh, one farad and the other one is 2.4 farad so uh, you can use one capacitor for farad it, it's not good to have uh, the capacity of the capacitor too much because they need to charge they will take a long time to charge it and you don't want to to use uh, too low capacity like one farad uh, that will be not enough so three to six farad, sorry, three to five farad, that will be much more better for the discharging and for the welding. So after the capacitors, we have the, the copper rod. Uh, I bought one rod, 20, meter, 20 centimeter long and six millimeter in diameter. Yeah, I think we still have two minutes or less so we continue on this part and then we'll talk about the lower part here so uh, I cut this road 20 centimeter into two half two pieces each one is 10 cent 10 centimeter 10 centimeter long and six millimeter wide uh, diameter but here on the negative terminal I put the thyristor, the SCR, silicon uh, rectifier. It's uh, this is this guy is the one who make the 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 discharge. So this is the gate for discharging these capac uh, these capacitors. And uh, how it's work? It, it, this one you need about three volt. DC volt to to operate it so in order to make this line on or open or so closed then we need to have a 3 volt this is the positive of the, the thyristor and this is the negative of the thyristor so in order to open this gate we need 3 volt so what, what you can do you can use a double A battery or do as I did here. So the easy way is to use a double A, a, double a battery to operate this thyristor. So when we make when we when we when the gates open, the the negative goes to the road 
And if you put the 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 strip, the nickel coated strip that we are going to weld the, the battery on, then when we close this, uh, when we op make this gate operate, then the negative come here and the positive come here and the discharge happen. So this is for part one and uh, part two is coming on the next video. Keep tuning.